So coming to the limbic system, we should know the anatomy of limbic system. So the limbus, the term was initially referred to the region called as borders. We also say limbus of the eye or limbus of any structure. Limbus means it is the border. Initially, whatever structure was in the border, they were functioning together. So they named it as limbic system. But later on, they identified that limbic system is the one which is involved in emotion and behavior. If something is involved in emotions and behavior and they are functioning as a single circuit, then that is called as limbic system. So all the nuclei which is involved in this process will be included under limbic system. Here they have included four cortical areas and seven subcortical areas. So coming to the cortical areas first, there are four important cortical areas orbitofrontal cortex, then subcalousal gyrus, then cingulate gyrus. Cingulate gyrus, we have already seen that some part of the medial processing of pain is done in the cingulate gyrus or cingulate cortex. Then parahippocampal gyrus. So these are the four major areas which is involved in the cortical structure. Now coming to the subcortical structures, there are seven subcortical structures. That includes parts of the basal ganglia, anterior nucleus of thalamus, then septum area, then hippocampus, hypothalamus, then para olfactory area and amygdala. Even if you don't remember all of these uh, names, we have to remember one important circuit which is consisted by all the structures. So we'll talk about that structure. That structure is called, that circuit is called as the Pappus circuit. And nowadays there is one version which is called as the modified Pappus circuit. So this is the most advanced version and the recent uh, findings of paper circuit which is called as modified paper circuit. If it is modified paper circuit, there has to be a circuit which is already there which is called paper circuit. What is the difference between the previous paper circuit and this modified paper circuit? The difference is that amygdala is included in the modified version. So this amygdala is included in the modified paper circuit. So this paper circuit, these are interconnections between various nuclei but their ultimate function is for a emotion and behavioral aspects of the person. So let's start this circuit. This circuit is very, very important. So in this circuit, the hippocampus is like a beginning spine. So let's start from here. The hippocampus as well as the amygdala, both of it give their influences to the mammillary body of hypothalamus. We will see in, along with the structures of hypothalamus, there is one region called as the mammillary body. From the mammillary body, Already we have seen in the thalamus, the anterior nuclei, the mammulothalamic tract will go, which we have seen it in the thalamus. So from the mammillary body, it will go to the mammulothalamic tract to the anterior nucleus of thalamus. This circuit is the inner circuit, but let's complete the outer circuit first. From the hippocampus, it goes to the amygdala and it goes to the hypothalamus through the fornix. And from the hypothalamus, it can directly go to the prefrontal cortex. It can directly go to the prefrontal cortex. And from the prefrontal cortex, it can go to the hippocampus. And this last circuit I am saying is it can go to and fro. From the hippocampus also it goes to the prefrontal cortex directly. And from the prefrontal cortex, it can go to the hippocampus. So this is one outer circuit. And inside this circuit itself, there is another group of circuits present. From the mammillary body, already we have seen through the mammulothalamic tract. It is mammulo thalamic tract. It goes to the anterior nucleus of thalamus. From there, it goes to the cingulate gyrus. From the cingulate gyrus, it goes to the prefrontal cortex. This connection is also to and fro. From the cingulate cortex, one more internal connections are formed, including the parahippocampal gyrus. Parahippocampal gyrus. And through the parahippocampal gyrus, it goes to the enterorhinal cortex. Enterorhinal cortex. And finally, they will reach the hippocampus again. So now we have to understand the functions of all of them. What is the function of each of them? The hippocampus is very much involved in short-term memory. Short-term memory. And it is also involved in conversion of short-term to long-term. So the conversion of short-term to long-term memory occurs with the help of hippocampus. Then amygdala is very, very essential for emotional memory. And this emotional memory is very, very strong in case of females. That is why all their memories, whatever they incidents they have, they connect it to their emotional memories. And when emotional memories are charged, this entire circuit will be charged and they can remember it better. 
that's why all of us who have a strong emotions or strong connections we will not forget those memory for example whenever uh, you had some very beautiful incident or you went to a place which could remember where you could remember very beautiful incidents so this kind of emotional memory is done with the help of amygdala and it is very very quite strong in case of females and from there it goes to the hypothalamus so whenever any memory is there not only the emotional aspect but also the peripheral aspect suppose suppose you see a, your friend after a very long time you are you will uh, you will get excited your heart will beat fast all these things will happen all these things cannot be done by the hippocampus and amygdala for that we need the autonomic system to be activated that is done with the help of hypothalamus so they control the bp heart rate and those functions so that is done with the help of hypothalamus not only that this cingulate gyrus is also involved in the cognition functions it is involved in cognition function like understanding this emotional memories and behavior memories this is also involved in anterior nucleus of thalamus is also involved in recent memory recent memory this prefrontal cortex is involved in working memory this prefrontal cortex involved in working memory and this parahippocampal gyrus is involved in an important factor called as spatial memory what is the spatial memory like remembering the spaces or uh, roadway or the pathways this they have studied in beautifully with london taxi drivers before the era of google maps maps they studied the london taxi drivers even in our sherlock homes we have seen that the taxi drivers keep on uh, taking them from one place to another and they have studied this london taxi drivers brain and they have found that their parahippocampal gyrus along the hippocampus and their hippocampus were larger in size why because they were continuously navigating and their spatial memory was very very good that is the reason this parahippocampal gyrus is involved in spatial memory now coming to the final part that is anterorhinal cortex this anterorhinal it is related with the nose so anterorhinal cortex what is the importance of this this is involved in memories of smell olfactory memories we can say olfactory memories so that's why this whenever some of the incidences or some of the very good food whenever the smell is coming we suddenly remember that it looks like my mother has cooked my grandmother has cooked those kinds of olfactory memories or the emotional memories are also associated with this so that's why our brain whenever it is associated with any emotion it remembers it very very nicely and for a very long duration because of the function of the limbic system so this circuit you have to know and you have to know all the components of it especially the amygdala part because it was recently added and it is involved in emotional memory